on. All right. The appointed hour of five o'clock having been reached, I welcome everyone to this meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter, Chair of the Amherst Design Review Board. I call this meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this public hearing of the Town of Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's virtual meeting by using the Zoom login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which provided on the Town of Amherst website. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the Design Review Board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Please say aye if, uh, when I call your name. Tom Long, Lindsay Schnarr, Janet Marquard. Present. Okay, and Eric Azikos. Present. Okay, also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner and staff liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by a town meeting in October of 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under section 3.2 of the zoning bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center, the design review overlay district, and the town common design review overlay district. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant, board, ap applicable land use board and building commissioner. And then we have tonight's agenda. Do you have that, uh, Maureen, or you, the uh, actual? Uh, I can certainly pull that yeah. up. Okay, yeah, why don't you pull that up? Um, I also just wanted to point out that Tom Long is now in attendance. Oh, okay, good. Uh, Tom, is it, are you here? I thought I saw him. Is he here? Where he was. Okay. Okay. So. okay. This is an application DRB FY 2021-04 Town of Amherst, various locations to review the proposed locations and design at the proposed solar power public information and emergency communication system. There you are, right there. Okay, so uh, we're back to where we, we were picking up where we left off. Is go. that right, Maureen? And uh, how do you want to proceed? Shall we have Brianna 
Uh, yeah, so yeah. Burana, um has provided the board okay. a, uh, a, a mock-up design of what the SUFA signs um, could look like. So uh, Brianna wanted to reintroduce yourself and show the board what uh, those mock that mock-up design looks like. Absolutely. Thank you, Maureen. And thank you all um, board members for your time last week and more time this week um, in order to respond to some of your feedback and questions. I am going to, um, I believe everyone here saw the presentation last week. Do I need to recap any of like the no. background information? Okay. So um, if you bear with me one second, I'm going to share, um, start by sharing the mock-up of the signs with the um, using wayfinding assets from this, the upcoming signs for the town of Amherst, as well as just a reference um, to having an Amherst specific background to hopefully give us some context. So just a moment while I pull that up. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see my screen now, which you see um, on the left-hand side is the front view of the sign. Um, we're incorporating pieces from the wayfinding sign package um, and design guide that was provided by um, Seth Gregory Design. And on the right-hand side, um, they would not be side by side like this. It's just the reverse um, of the sign um, shows elements from the wayfinding um, and a sample map that we could use. Again, this, these are all just um, sample potential images. Uh, we've pulled the map from the Walk. Writer's Walk, which Jan um, might be very familiar with. So it's just a sample of a, of, of a design that we could have on the back. Um, and we are pulling the colors from the Wayfinding Signs design guide. Um, the colors on the side here are just placeholders. We can match those to any specific color. And um, the news feed that's framed in here um, just gives you an another sense of the information that could be pushed out on the sign, um, local updates. We can hook it into our social feeds. We can have PBTA bus scheduling and weather information and I draw your attention to the, the black box um, would be kind of a placeholder for the, the free local business advertising. Oh, okay. okay, so what are people, are they, I was trying to reflect on the size, they look very big, uh, particularly tall based on the photos we had last week with a person standing beside one. Um, uh, I just wonder. I, I would say, Catherine, that th this is this imagery is just a mock-up. And yeah, I realize that, but I remember from well, last year, the I mean, from last week, they look tall. They look rather tall. Maybe that's whole, the whole aspect of trying to provide you know enough solar battery. I don't know. Um, yeah, the whole have, Brianna, with solar and it has to curve and sort of stand out of it. Seems to me and look at an eye level. Uh, imagine neighborhood news feed is just above your eye level, so then all the rest is above your head. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I gather the color on the side is taken from the wayfinding. It's actually a darker maroon. It looks kind of red there, but um, I'm thinking mm -hmm. you must be using the darker maroon color. What are you referring to? The side, Jen. Yeah, that God. yeah, that part that that part she's marking right now. I think Brianna said that could be any color we want it to be. Yeah. Right, but I'm just saying it looks bright red there, and in fact, if it's from the Wayfinding Color series, it's a much darker maroon color. So, what so are, do you all have questions? Uh, I thought maybe we should start with this. Is what we asked for was a mock-up of what might be maybe more appropriate for Amherst. So now the question is, uh, are people comfortable with this? Um, what do you think? Oh, well, I, first I wanna go back to Brianna because um, I got the impression that we, you have this money because of the COVID funding and that the thought was this would, this was more or less necessary because of the COVID uh, situation and trying to put out, you know, flash news that might affect people because of the environment. But 
uh, I'm not sure, is, is that really what we're talking about or is there an attempt to sort of incorporate this long-term into the town for various kinds of information? Yeah. Well, thank you for your question, um, Madam Chair. So we are um, justifying this project and we received funds from the CARES, um, CARES Act spending because of its connection and um, important, importance to sharing that real-time information specifically to do with um, public health emergency notifications um, to, to visitors to our town or for, to, to community members in our town who's, who spend time in the downtown area who may not be getting this information in other ways, um, you know, tra other, other traditional uh, print or news media ways or who lack um, access to internet and or devices. Um, the part of the project that has the signs, I will remind, is a is a pilot project. We are only signing on to have these signs for a year, and then we'll reevaluate. Um, mm -hmm. I imagine at that point we would probably have a, a going through a similar process, although I'm not entirely sure. Um, but the the signs are going to be a pilot project to see if it's the right fit, to see if um, it has the impact that we uh, anticipate. And then the, the charging core elements is something, um, the solar charging cores that you saw mm -hmm. in, in other slides, which I'm happy to bring back up, are something that the town can keep, will keep as part of the project to do with what we will. If, if we find that it's been beneficial to have in the downtown area, we will keep them or move them as needed, but the signs um, are only a, a license pilot project so that we, we would anticipate and reevaluate after um, the license agreement expires or as it is about to expire. Okay. So questions from anybody? So I have a question that's more general. I'm relatively new to the design review board. Do we have a sense of the timeline? And this not not just for you, but for everybody, a sense of the timeline of the wayfinding system that is going to be implemented in town and when that might be implemented and what impact or overlap these might be providing in relationship to that. So um, any updates on that might be really helpful for me to consider this. I think it's pretty close because we have been looking at it for a few years and most recently the determination was made of which exact spot certain signs would go. Um, and it's been scaled back to be affordable. Maureen, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but um, I would say that probably they're, they're looking at next spring to start installing things. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Jan, Jan's correct. Uh, so uh, the planning department has gone through the, the design review board uh, for the design and locations of the wayfinding signs, including um, the gateway signs and informational pole signs. And uh, I, be I believe they've, um, the signs have been reviewed at the town council. There is one sign that is located on private property at the Emily Dickinson uh, property, and that needs to go through the planning board for site plan review. Oh, so yeah, Tom, you're on the planning board. Um, has that one gone through the planning board yet? I'm, I've only been on for about two or three months. So if it came before that, no, I don't think it's gone. I don't think no, it's okay. Good. Yeah, I think that should be coming up soon. Okay. Uh, and that would be at the corner of Triangle and Main Street at the okay. at the intersection there. So if all goes well, um, the plan is to um, is to fabricate them, um, order the fabrication, and have them in, installed in the starting in the spring of 2021. Okay. Do we go know? Ahead. Go ahead. I was asking if we know um, where these are located in relationship to existing signs in that plan and whether there's any duplicates or proximity to those? Yeah, so uh, Brianna has met with myself, uh, Ben uh, from uh, all of my fellow planner and uh, Chris Brestrup, the planning director, to uh, look at these proposed signs in relation to the location of the wayfinding signs. Um, so they're not, you know, right next to each other or they're, um, there's no conflict in, in location. So it has been vetted and it will be continued to be vetted if there's any changes to 
either these two for signs or the wayfinding signs and additional signs such as you know just your plain old directional signs so this sign uh, one of these would be installed at the same corner as the wayfaring signs wouldn't it mm -hmm. uh, up at the corner uh, right right where this corner is right here isn't that correct isn't the wayfaring sign going to be right there at the corner of in the main light main intersection on the side uh, i think uh, so Brianna, um, can you pull up the latest look, uh, the locations of the SUFA signs? Yes. Yeah. Busy girl. <laughs> um, I know it's a, a bit busy of a map because you all are also seeing um, dining and other icons on here. Um, so the question marks represent the SUFA signs and the stars with the maroon, I guess, uh, represents the charging stations. Yeah, so, um, yeah so and the wayfinding sign is Caddy Corner. Okay, across the sort of. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. And that well, that helps. So they're not at the same. As I uh, thought they were going to be at the same corner. Okay. Yeah, you know, I think originally Brianna had proposed it at uh at the way beginning um at the same location but after uh you know collaborating with the planning yeah. department things have been adjusted yeah yeah right okay so did, uh, what are what are members thoughts about the colors the color of the sufa sign the layout um can you can you bring it back to the to the design i feel better about it seeing it contextualized with this other wayfinding effort. It does feel like it has more of a home here. And so I'm really appreciative that Brianna and team, you were able to pull this together for us. I think that um, it has more of a home here and doesn't feel quite like um, uh, a, a misplaced <laughs> um, new set of signage yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so yeah. I, I I'm appreciative I do think that um, you know I know this is just a mock-up and uh, so some things are a little askew and what have you but there are a few things that might be nice to see and that is say um, aligning the um, vinyl at the bottom of each one the left and the right, you know, one side and the other, so that it feels like one continuous wrapper to the best of our ability. Um, and I, I'm also a little bit hesitant about the map and wonder what kind of information we'd like to see. It seems to me that the wayfinding signage is kind of in lieu of a map, right? That you would be looking at signage all over town that says, go this way to find X thing. And somebody spent a great deal of time thinking about what would be inclusive in the signage. And in this case, we're looking at a map that is kind of upside down, right? It, and so there's always the question with maps and wayfinding, whether you want north to be on top or you want what's ahead to be on top. And it gets confusing for people to read. Um, and so I'm just, I'm debating in my own mind whether a map is the appropriate thing or we want to include interesting facts about Amherst or um, anything else. Uh, that's a really good point. Brianna, didn't you have a couple other ideas or examples from other communities of what, in lieu of a map, it could be, you had mentioned it maybe um, in an email that it could be a or B or map. <clears throat> yes, definitely. And <clears throat> I can bring up some of those examples. I think Brookline was one of the examples where they incorporated some um, some facts, um, as Erica Zikos just mentioned. So I can happily show that. And it, it really is up to us. We don't have to stick with one um, design for each of the signs, or we can. Um, and I will just remind that we can change the vinyls out um, several times with relative ease. Um, but I'd be happy to bring up that example if it'd be helpful to see what, uh, for example, what Brookline did on some of their, their signs where 
Um, they kind of shared more interesting facts about the community. So if you could just give me one moment, I can I can pull that up. And while Brian, I was about to mess up your name. And as Brianna is is pulling that up, uh, again, this is just a mock up, and um, and uh, Brianna wants to have um, this mock up to show you. So uh, as she moves forward to the town council, as as um, she would. Um, as the town debates whether to even make this, this uh, purchase or lease contract with Sufa uh, company. Um, and after the, the, the uh, panels and, and such have been purchased uh, and uh, Brianna works with Sufa in the planning department to finalize the designs, um, she can certainly come back to the DRB to finalize um, the layout mm -hmm. and coloring and font, et cetera. So this is just to give you a, a, a con is just a conceptual design. Right. Yeah, yeah. It would be nice if on the information side, the news side that changes, <clears throat> if we could have, for instance, the writer's walk uh, map and information as just an item with a, a QR code so that <clears throat> at least for the first year or every fall as families come or something, it would be available, but it doesn't have to be always up there. I mean, I realized that was just a way of Seth, getting something from Seth to put up with the colors, but um, I like this idea of mentioning other things about Amherst than historical things. You know, it could be a, did you know that in Amherst there's blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, actually the town could really have fun with it of maybe each month is, you know, historical month, for the fall or, you know, the historical, uh, you know, one month or season. Yeah. And well, we uh, can even use like Women's History Month, Black yep. History Month, things yep. like that, and highlight things in the town that relate to that. Public art, architecture. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you could really uh, have fun with it of having this to be a example of a theme or, or a celebration of, of a month long. So how, long, how often can this be changed? Can you change it every day, every month? I mean, it's just a le maybe I should yeah. back up and say, I, I thought there was some electronic capability. That's the other side. Right now we're talking about the permanent skin. The oh, other okay. side is the, the news side that can be changed. Okay, so where the map was, was the news side? Okay. No, it All was right. the idea for a permanent skin just as a way of showing the colors. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The colors to me are, actually even better than the ones that were proposed for those welcome to Amherst signs. Well, uh, they're the same. It's just that. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Uh, we were looking for, a, a, to me, those the, the quality of those colors was, uh, was even better than what we were presented with before. And hopefully everything can go together and really be, you know, good looking. So this is the, Okay, so what are we looking at here? Would this be this the sign, the side that would be um, chain, Brianna, or? Uh, yes, this okay. is um, an example. Whereas I showed you for the Amherst mock-up, yeah. we had okay. the the map. This right. would be a sample of a, another back side of the sign where some back people side. choose to do okay. more wayfinding directional signs. People do facts. Some some communities are even doing right now because of COVID. Um, a custom public health reminders and things like that. Mm -hmm. So this one is representing Brookline and I, I hope that you can see it. I know the text is probably rather small. Um, so I can zoom in if that's better, but we've got the more you know Brookline kind of sharing some more interesting facts about the community and highlighting some of their um, historical buildings in this case. I don't believe this is their town hall, but I don't know Brookline well, uh, but they're highlighting some of their um, some of their buildings. And then, um, and, and to answer your question about how often, um, you know, in speaking with SUFA, they, they say that some of their clients will um, update it every season. So to me, that's saying maybe four times a year. Um, so if that aligns with campaigns, some campaigns that you were mentioning about his history or even, um, again, topical information, public health related, we'd have that probably at least four times a year where we could easily um, put up a new design. Okay, so you have one in the spring that has like the trails around town or something to encourage people to know to learn about new ones. I love that idea. 
So I, I'm writing down. So the vinyl side, uh, you know, just this is just in a lot of way brainstorming. Um, but if, if if this could be updated f four times a year, maybe it's uh, each each time there's a different theme. Mm -hmm. That's the back side, right? We talked about. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if we wanted something monthly, like for the various months, like I mentioned, women's history or black history or all those kinds of things, we could do that on the other side under a news box. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that would be what you would do, Brianna, right? You're in charge of that. Correct. So the, the front side of the sign, um, and if you'll bear with me, I'll refer back to um, I'm not sure if you can still see my screen, but I'll refer back to here where you get a, can you see the neighborhood news feed, the, the box? It didn't change. Oh, it no, didn't change? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll have to reshare that with you. But uh, the news feed, the e-ink box, a lot of them are basically applets. So many apps that we can connect to automate a lot of information, but we also control information that we can directly push out any time that we'd like. Uh -huh. um, so we would have the opportunity to do a, a feature of the month using the e-ink um, technology on the front side of the sign. Um, and I'm going to just share that back with you guys now so we can see. But it's also uh, you could change at the drop of the hat, like when the new mask order went in, you could just put that up right away, right? Yes, part of the technology is giving um, the administrator or myself access to a dashboard where we can update um, and um, push where it says local updates, pushing things out specifically to the sign in real time, um, as well as linking to other feeds, either through RSS or through other um, integrations. For example, the PVTA schedule, if we decide we don't want that for this particular sign, we can put something else in that space. But the, the capability of us pushing out real-time information would come directly from us. So we would not have to go through the, the sign company. And something like the weather is just an applet that would be feeding in continually. Yes, exactly. And we, we could change, um, you know, each sign can be customized for what's displayed. If one is um, in direct proximity to a, a transit stop, then we can make sure that the, the bus schedule is on that one. If one isn't, then we can choose something else to occupy that space that's more relevant. Great. So I have asked uh, <clears throat> Maureen, I sent her email, but I really probably should bring it up now because they're rather tall, uh, are there any ADA um, implications here? If somebody's in a wheelchair, um, will they be able to, is that something we should uh, consider? Will they be able to read the uh, message? Uh, would it be at eye level? Is that ever a consideration, Brianna or Marie? That's a good question. I, I didn't have a chance to respond. Yeah, I, yeah, I really popped no. that on you, but. Um, uh, uh, the planning department can work with Brianna and Sufa to um, explore um, what are the appropriate font sizes that and font types um, that are ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, didn't know, I didn't know that. So does it, uh, the uh, solar panel on the top, uh, What's your understanding as to uh, how long it can power the um, board if you have w a week of, uh, you know, no sun or lots of snow and ice on top of it? Is that, is it going to go out? <laughs> you know, so what do you, what's your understanding on that? Uh, my understanding that that has not been an issue. Um, that okay. the slope of the um, panel is designed oh, so that, yeah. uh, for the most part, snow or ice would um, okay. right. Um, and the science, um, I, I can get more information about about downtime or anything like that. It it hasn't been an issue in any of our conversations um, to date, but the, they do, the sign company does maintain the signs weekly on their own. The town doesn't have to do any, um, any of that. So we will have weekly touch points with the company who physically come on site to um, check the signs and maintain any issues. Okay, good. Is it a local company? It's in Massachusetts? Yes, it's a Boston-based company that um, 
is in Massachusetts and it's, um, I think I have some more details here and it's, um, I mean, I don't know if this mm-hmm. matters to this board, but it's a female owned and led company um, in, in based in Massachusetts and the primarily most of their cu- customers are in the Eastern part of the state, but there's communities um, out here that are actively a- acquiring these signs, some of our neighboring communities, in fact. Um, so they are, they do have a presence and commitment to this, to this region as well, a growing presence. Mm-hmm. Um, are there yeah. any questions or comments about the, the mock-up design? I, I have one. Um, I remember the super representative last time when I asked about kind of metrics for success of the pilot, she mentioned something about um, pedestrian metering, like some kind of access. And she, I, I thought she mentioned something about um, interaction. And I just wanted to clarify the e ink is read only or is it a touch screen? Are there places where people can leave? opinions or feedback or is it something you would do on your phone exactly so um the the interactive piece is something that we would send um you know have on one of the the squares of the sign um, as a prompt or a call to action and someone who wanted to interact with that prompt or survey or, or quick poll would answer it from their cell phone and so you would have to interact with it that way. It's not touch based. Um, and we don't have to use that feature, but it is an element um, that is available to us. Sure. And I, I was really asking in response to um, Catherine's question, thinking that if there are ADA issues, there are reach range and things like that. So it's, if our primary concern is, is readability and it's text size, then I think that's manageable. Mm-hmm. With the writer's walk, um, I learned it wasn't only the size of the font, but it also was how low the sign has to be. Uh, mm-hmm. And it looks to me here like they're a little too high. Um, so that's, yeah, that was is, right. it poss- is this a set location for the, the news feed side or can it go lower? I believe it is a set location and um, I hope that you can see my screen yes. here, but it's, um, I believe that's 37 inches off of the ground. The, the sign um, begins to, the, big, the, the lower portion of the display screen is there, starts there. So in response to that, there are standards and the standards are more about distance and scale, right? So it, the, the height matters, but um, the type is larger and farther away then it's appropriate and it can get smaller as it gets closer. So I think that's something that hopefully, you know, SUPA can also advise on in the sense that they have these everywhere. So they may have minimal maximal sizes that are appropriate, um, but also um, I'm sure there are standards by ADA about legibility and it is about distance um, yeah. um, okay. as well as scale. Okay. Are there any other questions? Erica, you had the most concern. Are you feeling better about it now, seeing it like this? I don't want you to be unhappy. No, I'll tell you, I'm I'm most excited about the charging stations, which I think are gonna be a real benefit to people in town. Um, Uh Definitely the locations that were thoughtfully planned out. um, And uh, And we get to keep those. So even if it's a year of this and we don't like it, (laughs) <laughs> I'll admit I didn't get to chime in last time, but I shared Erica's um, nervousness about the shape and scale without really understanding the signage package that was going out and um, how it would fit into the community. And I do feel better about it, seeing it in this context. Um, I also feel better being reminded that it's a one year trial and we can assess how it performs and whether or not it fits in. Um, so, um, so I'm feeling more comfortable about it as well. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Great. Should, wait, should I make a motion? Yes. Make oh, a is, motion. That for, <laughs> is that what you need from us? I, I believe so. And I just yeah. want to thank you all for your feedback before you get to the yeah. motion. I, I, it's been really helpful and a good yeah. process to go through. <clears throat> yeah. Do you need more feedback about the exact appearance or is that something that you're gonna work out with Seth or? 
So as far as um, the way that we wanted to um, proceed in terms of acquiring the signs was our staggered approach where we'd get the cores in place first, and then that would give us many more months to actually work on the specific designs for each individual sign. For example, if the back is gonna be different on each three or if they're gonna be the same. So I was hoping that we'd be able to get um, something closer based off of your feedback today, but probably um, have a future discussion about fine tuning the, the back of the sign mm -hmm. designs. And I, I leave it to Maureen to, to see if that's the appropriate <clears throat> reply to that. But that was our understanding that we'd get get the, um, the contract and everything going, get the signs purchased, and then we'd put these out in the spring, probably, um, I don't know the wayfinding schedule, but maybe in line with the wayfinding schedule to have another opportunity to make sure that there's not any overlap. Mm -hmm. okay. that sounds, so, uh, so you would fine tune it and um, we can certainly bring it back to the DRB for a, a, a review before it becomes finalized. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then I will move that the DRB approve the town's proposal for a one year um, pilot program with SUFA to put three signs and two charging stations downtown. The details to four. be determined. <laughs> four? Four? Three. Three signs, three chargers. Oh, three signs, three chargers, three charging stations downtown. Um, with the caveat that we get to see the continuing evolution of the, des the design of the skins. And that if we don't want to keep it after a year, we get to keep the uh, charging stations. Does that sound right? That says it all. <laughs> Well, you're all that? welcome to <laughs> modify the motion. <laughs> I think we got the point. <laughs> Anybody um, want a second? <laughs> yeah, we need a second. I guess uh, Erica or Tom. No, I'll second. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other, any further discussions or questions? If not, all in favor, and I guess I'll have to call your name. Tom? Aye. Or Aye. Aye. Okay, Erica? Aye. Jan? Aye. And me, Catherine. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any anything else related to this? We finish that. That's all we had on the agenda. Yeah, that's it. Uh, did we have? Do you have any meetings? Uh, minutes? No, no. Okay. No minutes. No. No old business. But I, I hope to uh, catch up. I, I've been. Um, yeah. Don't worry about my, that. My uh, my focus has been on um, sure. uh, the comprehensive permit. Um, application, which is yeah, now sure. So I, okay. I'll be able to okay. refocus. Not that, not that we're dying to read them anyway, but any uh, public comment? Anybody there from the public out there? You see anybody, Maureen? Uh, no, there okay. isn't. All right, then I think we can adjourn. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I so move. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. I'll second that. Okay, uh, I you declare. Can second it. Somebody else. Yeah, to. I know, but I'm. I'm. Yeah. Well, actually, I think I can at least second it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Somebody else second it. Erica, do you second it? She did. She. Okay. Very good. It was moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. Okay. Aye. Lovely <laughs> seeing you all. Take care. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much.